exit opportunities, has stated that the problem lies in Calais and should people consider Portugal a better holiday destination. Well, joining me now to discuss is a, a, a true friend of France, the former Labour MP and Minister for Europe, Dennis McShane. Dennis McShane, who do you blame for all of these disruptions and cues? Bonjour, Darren. Bonjour. I, I don't blame anyone, really. I blame the fact that last weekend, the whole of England finished school on Friday and wanted to get off down to the beaches they love been going to, you know, all their lives. And bingo, you saw that little bit of film of uh, Dover or Calais. I mean, I drove on the ferry to Dover a month ago and it was fine. But you had, what, about four channels? I mean, it's not enough. You cross from America into Mexico, there's about 50. And that really is the problem. Dover, whether we like it or not, Calais as well, Folkestone, they're choke points. Uh, I'm really glad the French and the British and the responsible people have got together. We haven't had a single comment from Liz Truss or Grant Shapps. The moment they open their mouths, it all becomes a lot worse. And we just have to keep plugging away at this. It's all going to be a lot slower because of Brexit. It doesn't stop it, but Brexit is slowing down travel because of the needs that we've imposed, the UK's imposed, for excessive passport checks. We've taken back control, the French have to take back control. But Dennis, though, the point is we've seen these sort of queues and build-ups at the border, at that channel crossing, many times before. You can go back to, they, they often yeah. predate the European Union. You know, these sort of things aren't new. <laughs> it's not a unique thing to Brexit. No, no. no it's, that's absolutely right. But, you know, I've been travelling to France for a long time, hitchhiking as a teenager, uh, just coming off the ferry boat with my past, my old blue black passport stuck in my jeans. And then with four children and we came off the Euro tunnel, you just you hold up the four passports, you'd be way through. Now each one has to be checked. They have to be checked that they're uh, not going to be out of date. They have to be checked that we are not spending more than 90 days in 180 in France. That's a David Frost. That's a Boris Johnson requirement, not a European one, uh, and they have to be looked at and then stamped. And it may be sort of three or four seconds instead of one, but when you've got 20,000 people and lots of crying kids, it really makes life miserable. Thank goodness, I mean, this weekend, looking at it all, it seems to be a lot easier. And I'm sure the French, the French take no pleasure in this. They want us to come to France and spend our money there. And we take no pleasure in it, for heaven's sake. And it seems that after all the political um, exchanges last weekend, the professionals are working on it. And fingers crossed the rest of the summer, it will uh, move reasonably smoothly. The French should be worried by comments from the likes of Jacob Rees-Mogg, who have praised Portugal's use of e-gates to actually allow visitors in, as opposed to French understaffing. Do you think people will be minded to instead go to Portugal? Yes, yes, yes. You've got four children. You've got a budget of, I don't know, if you're lucky, 800, maybe a thousand pounds. And you're going to buy flights to Portugal. I mean, do you know how long it takes to drive to Portugal? I have driven to Portugal. I start now, Darren, and believe me, autumn would arrive before I get there. I mean, dear old Jacob, he really does say anything, doesn't he? Well, we'll have to leave it there, though.